Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. Well, go on. Hey, man. So today we got a special guest, man. Say, man, we we say that every time because my wife say everybody's special. Mm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we got a special guest, man. I, icon for me because I love music, man. And, and when Dallas didn't have no sound, this guy here helped to make that sound possible. And a lot of people don't realize it, man, but we got to reach back, man, and give our, our, our legends to me. You know what I'm saying? The Rose is why they're here, man. Exactly. Check it out, man. Mr. Lucci is in the building, a.k.a. Lou Diamond. Yeah, Lou Diamond. <laughs> Hold on a second. Before I say what's up, man, doing stuff again. Hey, who is that on that intro? Oh, uh, that's XO, man. That's XO. XO, man. She do all my intros. Uh, really? I, 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 XO, man. Shout out to XO, man. She kill it every time. Where's she from? She from Longview, but she she been out here. She just did one with Fat Pimp. She did. She got one with uh B King. She going in. XO. XO music. She go hard right. as a female. How you, what you think about it? I liked it. You see, I wanted to see who it was. I'm like, all right, good, good, good. Yeah, man. So you know. Um, Mr. Lucci, man, it's good to see you, man. What up, boss? Man, man appreciate you for having me. Man, man, hey, Thank man, you, I'm just you and your lady. Man, Miss Miss Jamaica, she's something Ms. else Jamaica. too. She gonna she gonna hit she gonna hit you with a few questions. It's gonna be the way she does it. But but I got a few. But I first want to just kind of let you give a spill on just who you are and just you know just in case somebody don't know. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, shout out to everybody that's listening to this podcast right now. Man. But, uh, for the people who don't know, man, my name is Mr. Lucci, a.k.a. Um, Mr. Diabolical, a.k.a. Lou Diamond, you know. I started back in 1998 with uh, Mr. Pookie. Yeah, with, yeah, uh, yeah. Crook for Life was really one of the first songs anyone ever heard of me. And I did my first album, solo album, Diabolical, in 2001. Ran from that and um, been pushing ever since, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was just just you know, just just a lot just a lot of music, a lot of work, a lot of grind, a lot of struggle. Yeah, yeah. Just came home for a va- from a vacation. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. Man, it happens sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It's college. Best thing that happened to me. Man, you and man, say that again. Straight People don't up. realize, man. Yeah. Man, that thing. time hey, just just a little bit thinking time is something else. Yeah. You remember when we was out there we was talking, it was like, you know, it was like we was like, Man, I, they shouldn't glorify that. So, you know, you know, cause it, yeah. it ain't what it is, yeah. but straight up and I do mean this. In a good way, it's like, man, some some people need to go to jail. Hey, sit still, bro, you know, no, what you I mean? said you you said a mouthful straight up. Now, if they sit still and use that time wisely, they're supposed to, yeah, wisely, then it's gonna be a benefit for him and everyone else he encounters for the Correct. rest of his life. But you know, if he doesn't, then it's gonna be something else. Yeah, a lot of time it turns into recidivism to where a person continues to try to figure it out and get caught up in a trapezoid to where they keep going back over and over again. I got an uncle that he about a six time loser. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got a cousin in Houston that's a five time loser. Just came home this time, man, and uh, we we trying to keep him home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and and actually lost his mother and his father this last time when he was gone. So, you know, this this stuff Man. gets real. You Ain't know what I'm saying? Yeah. So so, you know, um I think a lot of times, you know, people don't realize but it it saves you like like Jonah in the whale. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it saves you from a lot of stuff that might have happened to you. It kind of cocoons you to where when you when you do get that time to come back, you'll be just like Jonah and you try to you'll flip it and it'll yeah. be something better. You'll take that time and, and you'll flip it and do use it for something good. But I've heard so many people say whenever they've been in there so long is that when they come out they don't know how to readjust so they feel more comfortable being inside so they'll get in trouble again and go right back inside because they think of that as being their home more than here well what i seen on some of them because i've I seen people come and you know you see people come and go right mm-hmm. when they out yeah and well one of the things is probation violation you know a lot of people don't want to People, I took a program off inside a um, jail. That when you get out, you take a program. It's a drug program called RDAP. But it's yeah. really, a, it's really a psycho, uh, like a, like a psychology program. Because because you know, it's my. It, they don't talk nothing about drugs. Just talk about your thinking pattern and stuff like that. But see, 
I look at it, a lot of those guys who I saw steady coming back, they got comfortable with. When you're in jail, it is true. You don't have no no bills. You don't have nothing you have to do. You got to work at certain spots. But besides that, you don't got to worry about food. You ain't got to worry about showers, stuff like that. They give you poor hygiene stuff if you don't have money. Mm -hmm. You know, but if you don't have no money, you're going to eat and you're going to, you know, do that, right. those things. And a lot of people get comfortable with that. And then when they come out to the real world and reality, having to pay bills and do this and do that, some people fold under pressure and they take the easy way out, as you say. Right. They want right. to go back. And, right. you know, so. Yeah. And I think. I think a lot of times, man, when you when you do, like you said, something that was key earlier is the, to use the time wisely, you know, and you can tell the ones that's really changing when, when you're in there. You can see the change in the individual because a lot of times they'll disconnect from everything around them as well and they'll start to kind of read and do different things to challenge their character from where it stands. And I think that's something that you can tell. You can see a person who's causing issues. If they cause an issue, they're going to cause issues in there. As well, they're not, and, yep. and, 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 and they're going to write a letter home and say, hey, man, I love God and everything's good when they get a chance to sit in their bunk at night when they really, really looking at who they want to be. Mm -hmm. But then that day, they go right back to doing all the crazy stuff that everybody else is doing that, that's around them. Because it's a whole, it's a whole like, environment, uh, people, uh, you know what I mean? You got, you're interchanging with different people, including the guards, the, gir the girls, the guards, the girls, same thing. How, you know? how, is, how is the feds different from the state? Feds in the states, in the way how they treat them, how they live while they're in there, because I've heard different things about. I think it. I think the you was in the feds. I was in the feds, and, right. and 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 I think I think how did they treat you? Uh, it's all on the individual. It's all, like he say the guard. Yeah. It's on the yeah. guard. Yeah, because it could be from eight to four. It could be hell, and then from uh, five to twelve, it's the best thing ever. Yeah, it's on the guard. They yeah. control the environment. Yeah. They control. They control the move. They the DJ. Let me say that. They the <laughs> DJ of the situation. You know. Yeah. But the difference that the people who, because some people were coming from state to yeah. feds yeah. back and yeah. forth like that, they the state don't have air conditioning like central air, central heat and stuff like That's that. Right. They don't have right. the 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 MP threes like certain music, such certain amenities and things that we got in the feds. They don't have. Right, that's why I hear some people say um, being in the feds is like a hotel. I don't think I, I would compared to, to yeah, I state. get it, I get it, I get it. Now a cheap hotel, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but depending on where you at, because I was blessed, like I was my, I never had a, any any prize and then so my points were so low that I was able to go to a camp. So I went to a camp inside of uh, Alabama. My second prison I went to it was yeah. in Alabama. You was in Seagullville at first, right? Yeah, I was right. in Seagullville. Then yeah. I went to Alabama. But man, that was a that was a country club. That they had volleyball courts, movie theaters, they had a pool. They wow. they ended up filling the pool in, you know, because people were complaining. But it, it got golf course, you know, a whole lot of different things. It was the prison that they made when they did Watergate. When the Watergate okay. scandal happened, mm -hmm. that's what that's wow. where they had all them. Wow. They even got they they still got their cabins. They those little cabins back there where they had individual Conjugal. individuals. So uh, that type of that type of phase is where Martha Stewart probably would have went. <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah, she's in one of them. Yeah, right. yeah. I was yeah. in Maxwell. They got Mac, they they got the best, the top two ones in Maxwell, and then ones I'm in Florida. Wow, Pensacola. Man, so so I, I I like I like the conversation where it's going, but I want to get into the music. Go ahead. Um, did you get everything out of there? Because I know you. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, the now show? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah. We moving on now. Yeah, all right. I, I, okay, we'll start back back in the days. I want to ride with you because I ain't never got to interview you. So I, I know you probably done told these stories a million times. You know what I mean? Let's go. But say, say like, when you guys first started off, man, um, you know, you was young, man. Well, how was you, about 15? Yeah, I was 15. 15. 15. I, I thought I, I hit it right. Uh, so... When you when you first started, how did, how did that thing first start off? I want because the people need to hear this, man. Your legacy is something else. It's gonna be told forever. Well, it started out for me because of my brother. Okay, I was at the barber shop and my brother was getting his hair cut. All I know, I got in the chair and the barber was like, "Hey, man, your brother say you can rap. What, what, let me spit something for me." And so I spit something for him, and he listened to me. And he say, "Spit something else." I spit something else. He just smiled and cut my hair. And then later on that night, he was cool with my pops. Later on that night, he called about 11, 12, and he had Kevin A on the phone. Wow. So wow. My, my dad brought the phone inside the room, woke me up, 
And it was Kevin A on the phone. So wow. and he had me rap for Kevin A. And then Kevin A said he wanted to meet me the next day after wow. school. Yeah. So at school I went and met him at the barbershop and rap for him and his wife. And then the day after that, I was in the studio with Pookie and them. Wow. So he had already signed Pookie and them? Or? Yeah, he already He had. Was it a management deal with, with, with y'all and Kevin A? Or was it just, he just was. Who? With Kevin the, A? The you, no, with Kevin A. Who? The, the the one that came and listened to you rap. That was Kevin A. Correct. Was that, y'all had a, a situation together at the time? When he, uh -huh. once he pulled you and took you to the studio? Nah, nah. He just wanted the next. He just wanted. Nah, I just met him. I lived, oh, yeah, I just met him. He because because it ain't like it was like it is a day to day. They looking for a situation as soon as they see you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but they. But he just there. wanted the opportunity to make some music with you. Yeah, he. Um, yeah, I, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> it was more. Why it was, you say it, it like that? I mean, it was more of letting me have an opportunity because he right. already had his ship going. Okay, he already had dropped K Rock. He already had his whole K Rock. Company yeah, started. yeah, yeah. Then he he was working on the Ripple album. He wow. Already, they was already getting played on the radio. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So he already was rolling. Yeah, he was already rolling. And plus, he, you know, he was uh, Kevin A was a he. He was an A and R for Def Jam. Uh, he worked really? with Death Row, Universal. Like when all those people send music here, he's the one that break it. He's the ones that go to the mm -hmm. DJs behind wow. the scene. Not yeah. not the club DJ. He goes to the DJs who enforce on all the DJs. Wow. So that's what he was. That's, that's how up. he got our music in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he slid it in the same pack. Wow. Universal them send that pack. They send that right. promo pack. And when you give the DJ the promo pack, it got 50 Cent, Dre, such and such, Mr. Pookie Crook for life, such and such, such and such. So the DJ just, they run mm -hmm. it. Do you remember the first, uh, what the rap that you rap for him? Um, Nah, I don't. I don't. <laughs> that was a long time ago. I don't. I don't even remember. <laughs> How long were you rapping before that day? Before that day, before that day, I was freestyling a couple of years. Couple of years. So you've always wanted to be a rapper. Yeah, I always wanted. Who to influenced be a rapper. you? Shoot. During that time, somebody had yeah, to influence from a young, from a young, young. Yeah, age, yeah, yeah. You somebody influenced. I used to like Bone. Bone. Whole life okay. When I was when when I was when I was baby baby, mm -hmm. like because that's when I um my mom used to have a big old stereo and I used to. Do the tape player and press rewind. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. write the lyrics down. So wow. I was writing the lyrics down to those songs. I wasn't rapping at this time. I just w wanted to write the lyrics down to the songs. I haven't heard anybody so, say that before. That's different. Yeah, I used to write the lyrics down. I just I used to want to know the words, so mm -hmm. I write the lyrics down to the songs. So once I do that, now fast forward, Screw comes and my brother, and them freestyling. So now and you know, Screw gonna always let that beat roll. So now we freestyling over the screw tapes. Wow. So I'm practicing like that and doing wow. that. And then, so that's like from, that screw stuff, so probably about, from what, about 12 to 14, something mm -hmm. like that. But what really sparked it was when I was 13, I was living in Louisiana, and that's when I heard um, Lil Wayne. Okay. He okay. said 13 in his rap. Okay. He was like 13, such, such. When he did that, I'm like, Shit, I ain't too young. Hell, I'm 13. <laughs> I can go. You know? Yeah, I'm like, I'm 13. I can do this. And then it really clicked that summer, when my the summer before I met Kevin, this is when I started writing. So so for, for me, writing, writing, mm -hmm. six months. Because that summer, my cousin, my kinfolk, y'all see him around me in the world, but he had a tape. They was rapping okay. at this time. I was I was 15 at this time. I was 14, 15. They was, they was rapping. I went down to my mom's wedding in, in Louisiana, and when we went to the wedding, he we in the parking lot chilling and he put a, a CD in and it's him rapping on the CD. Wow, blew my mind. I'm like, dang, fool, how you do that? Let me get in the studio. Let me get in the <laughs> I gotta studio. Gotta get there. And he like, yeah, yeah, I got you, I got you, I got you. We we the same age, one yeah. year apart. Mm -hmm. But um, I was down there that whole that that that, that something. He never let me go, man. It killed me, man. Wow. I was so mad. So yeah. when I came back, I I locked myself in my room for the next couple months and mm, I just wrote, just I just wrote. wrote, I just wrote because I felt like I probably wasn't good enough. That's, that's so crazy that um, in your mind, you probably was thinking that I know I'm going to be there, but you just didn't know that you could be there that young. Yeah. So when you heard the Wayne, you're like, I can do this now. Yep. That the, is so good. The thing I, I look at is you guys came before DSR. Yeah, we came before DSR. You guys DSR. came before DSR, mm -hmm. but I remember... OG Ron C, 
nemesis. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I remember the rally, when boys. The rally boys and I remember the, 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 you know, the movement before. And I'm just walking up into the fact of how you guys came in. And the way that you guys were doing your cadences, nobody hadn't been doing it like, like you guys was doing it in Dallas, like to me. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't see that that style, that the way y'all was ripping. You say, I could I could hear the bone, I, I get it, but you you still had a distinct sound. Yeah. For me, just going, just looking back hindsight, you know what I mean, I and I thank it. you for it. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times people still got a, say, say, uh, say, say, no, 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 no. You, you still know? got them. You, you, you ripping now. Did you see now? Yeah. This is a whole different. We ain't talking about Lou Diamond. Yeah. No sir. We, yeah. we still talking about Mr. Lucci. Right. You know what I'm talking right. about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know when I, I always when I, I be looking at things, man. So. When you when when this right here I was out should have seen it, man. Yeah. When, when, when this right here happened, you know what I'm saying? Eighteen on the piece and chain, fourteen on the yeah. yeah. ring. I remember that. Now that's Mr. Lucci. Yeah. Uh huh. What you wrote that one? I remember when I wrote it. Yeah. Oh, wow. So how yeah. was the process? Shoot, we was in the studio. He played a beat. That beat? Yeah, he played the beat, and. When he played the beat, I wrote the chorus instantly. Like, by the time it got to the eighth bar, I was like, give me a pen, give me a pen, give me a pen. I wrote the chorus, and then he gave us the beat, went back to my house, and then we went in on that one. But tell you the truth, the first ver- the first version we had, um, well, we didn't even get to finish it, because we started it. And um, we started it, and we got... Halfway through it, and uh, Kevin showed up to the crib tripping. Because, really? Yeah, he was tripping because um, we skipped some songs. See, I always wrote my shit fast. <laughs> I, and then straight up, I always wrote mine fast. <laughs> and I wrote mine fast because also, too, a lot of people don't know, when I used to do Kevin, when I was on uh, on his album, on Pookie's albums and yeah. stuff like that, he always made me rewrite my verses. He always made really? me write two verses. Really? Come with a verse. Because he wanted him to push him. Know. He wanted to push him. And I know, know what he I did. I know my about. verse was hard. I know Pimp my C, verse was hard. Pimp C you know did so boost it like that. He rewrite it a different way. He no. raced that verse and write another and write verse. He wanted to go. He wanted to go harder. Yeah, oh, okay. he, yeah, he pushing it. Another one. You know what I'm saying? I like that. He didn't do that to nobody else. No, 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 no. Yours was heavy though. Saw your talent. No, but, he, he no, he 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 was younger too. See this baby boy right here. Yeah. See, see, it's a difference when you're dealing with this, you the youngest child, right? Yeah. See, see, and and at the end of the day, that he been pushing everybody probably push you because yeah. you younger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. During that time, they like, oh yeah, we yeah, make him do it again, or you know what I'm saying, yeah. or get him to do it again, or you know. But it, it really, the young one usually the, the one that be coming the hardest. I ain't gonna lie to you. Even in the Bible days, you the young the young one. Oh, he, he heavy every time. I can promise you, I can take it there. Yeah. But I ain't gonna do that. But I can take it there. The young, the youngster always come hard. The, I believe the vision is always in the younger generation. The, just like I was telling you about your kids coming up. It's, yeah. it's something different in them. Way more exciting than what we ever done. Yeah. And people don't realize that. And so a lot of times we get caught in our old ways and we don't let the youngsters push us where we need to be. Yeah. And, and the technology is changing. I'm going there. I'm, let me get back. Yeah. Let me pull it back out of there. Yeah. So how, how old were you when you actually signed to Iconic? I was 18. Okay. Yeah, 18. See, yeah, see, but I finished my record when I was 17. The album was done when I was 17. But you didn't but sign until afterwards. Nah, he waited a year. He wow. wouldn't let me sign. Wow. Because my mom had to be present. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Because yeah. I was 17. Yeah, yeah. So he yeah. Just throw these fits and... He was a real good manipulator, you know. He used, to throw these, he used to throw these fits on me. On I'll scratch, I'll scratch your album if you show up with a lawyer. And this you don't, Kevin, you don't this, trust this, wow. this, this, this Kevin, a? yeah, this yeah. Kevin ain't. So I'm how that, did did so you why feel like? It took so long, sorry, babe. Oh, go ahead, babe. But why did no it take problem. so long for your mom to to appear to um, sign the papers? She no, he wouldn't. He wouldn't he, let. Oh, yeah, okay. he wouldn't even let it. Nah, my mom for wanted a whole to do year? it. Yeah, nah, wow. he wanted to do it. And then my mom. Did you feel like it was the best thing? Heck nah, no. Man. You nah. felt like it was it he wasn't wanted me to right. do it because he knew my mom and them was gonna gonna know what was going on. Oh yeah, he's trying to manipulate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. that's what it was. And he yeah. did what he did because my my me and my T lady never fell out behind that because I uh my brother too. You know what I'm saying? Because I I went and um I was wrong. I went I was like man I want to rap, so shoot, I'm doing this wow. regardless whether y'all with me or not. And it kind of caused some some you know what I'm saying some riff. Because they were like, this ain't a good dude, he, you know. But I didn't want to hear. I didn't want to hear that. You know, the thing, the thing that I can uh, definitely tell you is, uh, you know, when you when you dealing with when you dealing with uh, 
different people and 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 you hear this over and over again mm -hmm. about those first situations that people you know what i mean mm -hmm. have in the industry yeah. where where it, it ain't just one person this thing happened throughout during those times yeah people were getting down on everybody you know what i mean and and i think a lot of times what happens is they threw so much salt and dirt on everything that it made everybody be in conflict. You know what I mean? Like you saying about you and your brother, you you know, dear, or you and your mother, or whoever. Yeah. They, you know, that's and, and it's a manipulation tactic, as you 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 spoke on. You know what I mean? And yeah. what I saw as the tactic was having you in in that space for a whole year, sort of brainwashed you in seeing, and that's just my opinion from yeah. what you're saying, and seeing the music, seeing the life, seeing everything else without anybody getting your air and saying, no, 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 at an earlier stage. You know what I mean? Yep. But one thing I can say that you said that I know your character when I when you say it, but I was wrong. See, a lot of people yeah, ain't going to say that. I See, was. a <laughs> lot of people are not going to say it. They, you can tell in their character that they still holding resentments and a lot of stuff. In order for you to be able to say that, then you already done, you done, you dealt with yourself. That time, a lot of time that you spend with yourself is so potent. You said that earlier as well. It's real. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So I think that that's the part that will make you stand up and stomp down, especially for them kids. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. So being the youngest one signed to um, Iconic at the time, how was it coming in? And uh, how did everybody treat you? Uh, it was love. I met Pookie first. And um, I rapped the verse with Pookie. And then he was like, oh, yeah, you can rap. You know what I'm saying? And then I met Montes that same day. Mm -hmm. K-Rock was supposed to come, but he never showed up. And after that day, me and Pookie and uh, Mont, you know, we was just clicked. It was, we just jailed. You know, like I say, they start saying, Miss, they made us a group without us even saying it. You know, you know <laughs> we don't say, say yeah. Mr. Pookie without saying Mr. Lucci. Mr. Oh, it's man. automatic. Because like, it goes together to yeah, me. Everything is fluid. But, but, exactly. But the we thing, weren't even a group. Y'all, yeah, but so. y'all, 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 that's what I talk. And I said that to him early. I said, yeah. when it first happened, y'all wouldn't know. It, it wasn't no. It was a di it was it was like Pookie and Mr. Luigi. It was it, I I thought I didn't think of y'all as a group. Yeah. At first, and y'all y'all wasn't, was you? Nah, we weren't. Who but, came up with the but name? But y'all was Mr. every Luchy. time. K Rock. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh really? I used to go by J Lil J. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Cause my government name starts with a J. Mm -hmm. So I used to go by Lil J. And that after I got with Pookie and them, that K Rock called me one night. K Rock real aggressive. If anybody know K Rock, real aggressive bully type dude. He get on the phone like, hey, little nigga, uh, what's your name? I say, Lil J. He say, Lil J, rap some. I'm like, huh? He like, rap some. I'm OG K-Rock. I'm like, all right. So I rap some. He like, rap some again. I rap some again. He say, nigga, your name Luch. Yeah, <laughs> your name Luch. I'll let you later. <laughs> I got the phone. And I'm like, hell yeah, Mr. Luch. Yeah, that do work. And then you just put the Ooh. mister on there. Nah, uh, Kevin did. Kevin put the mist in front of all of us. Because okay. he, wow. he seen the vision, he was like, I like he, it. he never wanted to be a little because he said you're going to grow old one day. You're going to be a man. He said if they start they start off calling you mister, they're going to end calling you mister. So we're going to start that That makes that sense. That makes it because why, the reason why I asked you that because I'm like at 17, 16, and nobody calling no 17-year-old mister. That's good stuff. Yeah. So when I heard that, I was That's like, good I don't know where that came from. Yeah, he did that. That's what's crazy. Up. He did that with all, he did it with all us. You no, know, it was gonna be uh, Mr. Pookie. You know, it's Mr. Montes. Then it was uh, you know, it was us like that. But yeah. it's funny because man, I was talking to one of my friends today. It's a friend, and I pick up the phone. I'm like, hello. He like Mr. Lucha. I'm like, say, bro, <laughs> <laughs> bro, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> and let me ask you about this song. You know what I'm gonna play. I think you heard it. You know yeah. the beat like crazy. Yeah. That right there. How did that? that what, I, well, let me listen to it a little bit. Give me a little. Yeah. Yeah. That right there. Uh, that didn't hit for me hard. Yeah. You niggas help me, or y'all help me sell a lot of stuff. I ain't yeah. that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> y'all, hey, I wrote to y'all doing a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? I understand. I was in the streets, man. So let me let me ask you how did how did that process? I see my boy Don Chief. Shout out Don Chief. He'll be here this weekend. Yeah. That's how, how did how did uh how did y'all link up with him and how did that whole thing transpire? Uh, same way I came to the group by Kevin A. Okay, that man and, working. Uh, he putting yeah, it in. He, he was put, linked with C Dog. Okay. Uh, I don't know if y'all know C Dog. C Dog, a, a 
really a pioneer gatekeeper type dude for the city too. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. He don't get a lot of acknowledgement, but he know what he doing. So Yeah. Um him he knew Chief. Okay. And he told Kevin about Okay. About, uh, about us. I mean, well, about Chief. He told Kevin about Chief, and then he ended up setting up a meeting. We went and met him at a hotel, chopped it up with him because he was doing his own thing. Mm -hmm. And then we brought him over to the studio. And it we went did down. The whole, yeah, we did the whole tongue. And then it went know, down, man. It was smooth, too. Like, y'all all just vibe so good together, man. It, it It's like you couldn't. That song seemed like it was all you can jam it now and it's still jam. Yeah, it's like it's ahead of its time. Like it's it just gonna some songs just hit forever. Yeah, and that song right there is one that that I could listen to anytime and it's just it's just going. You know what I mean? It's just it flows, bro. You know I know you done heard that before. Yeah, yeah, I, I heard it before. I heard it before. <laughs> so what? Uh, and we we gonna keep going. Go ahead, babe. I know you got that whole book over here now. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I'm going back to when. The society when everybody puts you two to uh, you two together as a group, Mr. Lucci and Mr. Pookie, uh -huh. right? Um, how was it? Because now you had to do everything together as a group. And no, we didn't have to. You didn't have to. But you gotta keep in mind, we around each other twenty four seven. So why not? Okay, yeah. so you matched real good. In the yeah, we still drop solo albums. And okay, everything. sure did. Sure yeah, did. we still drop solo albums. Okay. We sure did. We, did we, good. We, we actually only did two albums together. But when on those solo albums, when y'all on each other's? Yeah, we yeah, on, you we, were still we on it. We on each other's so, oh, solo so, albums. Yeah. So you wouldn't really as, call it a group then? Nah, you know what I'm saying? I never but, did see it that way as much as... Now, when we talked to Mr. Pookie the other day, he's like, this is we, me, and Lucci, and that's it. You know what I mean? The way he feels, like almost like an MJG8 ball is the way I got it, because he even mentioned those guys on here. You know what I mean? Yeah. So See, to him, it's real, like, like it's us, yeah, you know? Yeah, so, you know, but it go, it boils back to what, remember we was out there talking? Yeah. It was like what what Instagram, what they do, the yeah. world outside yeah. do? Yeah, They tell the truth. Oh, so, yeah. So the streets told us that y'all is a group. Okay. I got me? it. That makes so sense. how can I convince you not to believe what you believe? Correct, correct, correct. So now, nah, and, and then I got to think about it. Shoot, we moved like a group. Like I say, we yeah. were together every day. Yeah. We worked every day. Yeah. You know? we, when you book us, you book us together. We yeah. We do individual shows. Yeah, yeah. You know, we book we book, we book, book close, so might as well. I, I think you guys did. I, who, that whole era for me, like I said, I appreciate it because at the end of the day, it was an enjoyable moment. I bought the CDs, and yeah, I I rock I rock with you guys, and that's that's the whole game. But Dallas, period, man. I wrote for Chief Allen, everything, eat greedy volume you can find. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just when you knit it with the city and you love what's going on in it, you gonna rock with it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. so I, I definitely definitely I miss those times too. When you think back hindsight, you be like, dang. And I, I'm gonna ask you some more question when we get in the. Lou Diamond later on, yeah. but right now we we dealing with Mr. Lucci. Well, you know, it says <laughs> that Diabolical and Rippler still holds the title of the most units sold for independent artists from Dallas. Wow. Do you know that still be true today? Nah, <laughs> she be looking up stuff, man. She do. now what what you nah. what you what you say it does? It now? says according to the Nelson Sound and Scan. So that's when hot. I googled it, that's what I found. Bet. Yeah, that's a good look. For cheesy. <laughs> so, I, like I told numbers you about, hey, lie. man, that numbers don't lie, man. And, and like I said, you guys are iconic and legends in the city. And the one thing I could agree with uh, Mr. Pookie on when he was on here is that Dallas-Fort Worth embraced the hell out of y'all, you know. Yeah. And, and, and that, that, that nobody hadn't seen that type of... Uh, but but y'all know the impact that a city can do right here. You know you can do numbers right here, yep. and people don't realize if you can hit a, here in San Antonio and Austin, it's a wrap because Texas is so big. You know what I mean? I think Lil Flip kind of even pushed that narrative when he came in mm -hmm. his success the, of how powerful these numbers do in the South. Yep, you can't do nothing about it. Shout but, out Flip too. Yeah, man. shout out Flip. That's yeah, our family. Like like so with Instagram being a a, a, a deal and Facebook and because MySpace didn't really just rock the music out too much. It was an Instagram Facebook type deal, uh, Twitter a little bit. Uh, how did you? Because you've seen the transitions before it was here and after it was here. How how did how do you look at things when it comes to that? Are, are you loving the mo movement the way things are going now? Yeah, TikTok as I, well. Well, I ain't got no TikTok. You got to get a TikTok. 
Yeah. And you, <laughs> you got to get a TikTok. That's the new thing. Listen, no, 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 no. I'm adjusting. Like you say, people got to adjust. I'm adjusting. You I'm have to get, get a one. Let me I'm tell you gonna, why. I'm going to get one. I'm going to get Every, one. It, you have to get a likey, too. So how was it adjusting? <laughs> you just you know, it's, it's so many adjusting? different things, man. Oh, wow, it, everything. Yeah, there's so many different places. Uh, everything adjusting, good. It's just they like what the hell is a likey? I see them over here. Like what is a likey? What but is it's a likey? well, old boy Prince. Them <laughs> they told us about this likey. Old boy Prince was on here. You heard? You know him, right? No, sir. He was with the GS boys. All right. Bet, okay. Bet, he, bet. And he he did that round rock song. One leg in, one leg out. You was was you locked out? You might have been just coming home, so you probably didn't hear it. But anyway. Uh, they do numbers on there, and like he is, you went on like I didn't go on there, but this is a place where people going live and and basically get, get an impact, right? Yeah, what you he can was, get paid. You get paid off of it. Bet. So pe right. it's stuff going on all the time with these platforms. And there's a lot of other Gotta platforms like <laughs> just like that. And and, and and they went live right here and, and had their phones on and steadily dealing with their live audiences because it accumulates. People can do pledge dollars or whatever. And, and and I think a, a lot of times that's where we get lost in the sauce. We got to step up and learn these new platforms because there's monetarily gain on them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't know them, you're missing out because you you missed Lou, Di Lou Diamond. No, nah, it's Mr. Lucci. Mr. Lucci. Hey, <laughs> I can't take because I'm, I'm. But you, you got to stay with Mr. Lucci because that's yeah. where the impact come from. That's where, that's where the people going to come I, through. I all your people. It. Yeah. yeah. It's so, just. I I ain't expect Lou Diamond to stick like it stick. It's crazy. I, like it, I wanted it to stick when I when 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 I got that name. You know every name I got. Nobody. I didn't never name it. everybody. Everybody. Wow. Else you Lou Diamond now. Uh, my partner Doski G. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, but how did he come up with that name? He called me Diamond because he was like, uh, I'd be one of the first artists to sell ten million out of Dallas. You wow. Know, he believed in me. He said you're gonna be one of the first ones. That's you know you go diamond, you go platinum. Yeah, gold. yeah, that's correct. Ten and where did Lou diamond. come from? Lucci. Lucci. Oh, duh. Duh. <laughs> duh. Duh. Yeah. Mr. Lucci. So let me ask you, man. So so what would what 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 do you do you, let me see, let me go back. The the TikTok, Facebook, Twitter. I told some guys on this the, on here the other day, it's like if you don't go on these platforms, it's like you open the door looking at your fans and closing the door back. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> cause they in there. It, on every stage, mm -hmm. so you supposed to be there to perform for. Yeah, and if you do it, it's gonna be like a monetary game. Yeah. yeah, beneficial for you. Yeah, trust but me. It's I know hard that now. To switch though, because you know we grew up in the days where you had CDs or tape disc, and you walking around and you handing out your CDs, giving yeah. out to people, flyers, and all of that. And right now, the way how society is, everything is internet, social media. Yeah, and it's it, it's. Seems hard for us to be able to manage all of these different sites. You have this one information you're trying to get out, and you're trying to you have to send it to Facebook, Instagram, um, like I mean, all these. And you're like, oh my god, I forgot to say it to this one. I need to say it to that mm -hmm. one. I need to say it to this one. And then even me doing research into this, if you're just sending pictures, it's easy because you can schedule that and have one app that sends it out to everybody. When you're sending out videos. A little bit harder to try to send videos out to everything and sit down there and do it. Yeah. But you see, kids sitting down and doing it like it's nothing. They love it because that's what they grew up. Yeah, it's their age. Exactly. What but I said us, earlier. But for us, it's yeah. a lot harder. Yeah, yeah. But I said that earlier, y'all. Y'all. Hey, it's it is harder. But but we have to learn. But we and we have, have to do, do it. it. Gotta, it's business. Got to it's adapt. business. Got to adapt. Yeah, we got to adapt. What else you got? Oh, it's on you, baby. Okay. <laughs> you got to get to it. Okay, so um, why did you leave Iconic? Uh, well, f wasn't getting paid. Found out what was really going on. Numbers being screwed. Yeah. yeah. So. And it was only it was you and Mr. Lucci who left together. Nah, Mr. Pookie. Mr. Mr. Pookie. Pookie. Nah, they stayed. Oh, they stayed. So you left. Yeah, I left. Okay, how long did you leave before they left? Probably six months to a year. Wow. Mm. You like the Ice okay. Cube. On straight out of Compton. Yeah, he left first. <laughs> yeah, man, like <laughs> yeah, he left first. <laughs> I, got the fuck out of uh -huh. I ain't finna play with. Her. I got the fuck out of there. I got out of there. Wow. I, think I told that, bro them too. You know what I'm saying? They were like, yeah. Your family probably already see, knew. And, see. and how did your family um, feel about it when you said you were leaving? They supported you with everything, no matter what. Yep. They. I mean, they could have said, "I told you. I told you." They was right. like, "Bet." 
But okay. What are we gonna do next? You know? How many brothers and sisters do you have? I got one brother, one sister. Okay, and you're the baby. <sighs> yes, man. How many kids do you have? I got five boys. That's my wow. guy. Straight up, that's what I'm talking about. Are you done? Are you Putting gonna try down. again for your girl? Mate, we don't know yet. <laughs> My you know, guy. you, you got to get a girl now. You got to keep no, going till you get a <laughs> You got to keep my going. Guy, my guy, we don't know yet. It's up in there. How old we'll is see. the youngest? Ele- 10. He'll be 11. Oh, so week. you might be done. Good. What? I'm a rapper, so though. I seen it. Right? Yeah, that's my 15 year old. I got a 15 year old. Nah. Man, that's crazy. So, so how he got in the music because of you? Young JG Say So. And I, he got oh, that's his name? Yeah. Young G. Nice. I like it. I like yeah, it. JG Say So. JG Say So. JG um, Say So. I'm going to be looking for him. He, uh, what's the name? He got in it because he wanted to get in. Do you help him? Yeah, I help him. You I, know what I'm does he write like you? Oh, he write like him. You know okay. But he writes I, a lot. I can't say a lot because I just know he was ready when I came home. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Okay. He just needs more pushing. Let me ask you a question. Sunday before Father's Day, will you be able to bring him and sit on this platform with him? We're doing a Father's Day thing. Sunday before Father's Day. I remember that, but like I told you on the phone, I got this fresh out the feds tour jumping. Oh, so if yeah, yeah, that date gets I get booked, it. That day's booked. If it's mm-hmm. booked, it's booked. I get it. But and if it's but not, we could, but we could do a Facetime, uh, a uh, 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 Zoom here. Okay, know, yeah. He gonna I, be you, with I got me. the screen. He gonna be with me. Cause okay, I'm taking them on the road. Well, if we have to do it that way, if we have to do it that way, all five. No, ma'am. Him. <laughs> he, he working. He performing. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, so, he so he working with him on stage presence and all yeah, that. I know what's going down. He's on my album. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, put on. Yeah. So I, I just say, um, when you, um. When, when when you do it, I may send you a Zoom link or whatever. I can put it on the screen here, Bet. both of y'all. And because I know uh, Mr. Pookie and his son, he said he's gonna bring his son. And another and, gentleman. And I got another guy that's bringing his son. Yeah. It's gonna be. A, it's, it's just something for fathers. Me and my son, he'll be here. He ain't got no other choice. Bet. Uh, he, he might. He might tell me no. I don't know. Nigga, twenty seven <laughs> now. Nigga may not. And how know. old is he? Oldest. Seventeen. Oh, he seventeen is the oldest. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Well. Okay. What we doing? Oh, <laughs> me again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just letting you ride out. Okay. So, um, whenever Mr. Pookie left and y'all came back together and created your own label? Mm-hmm. Crowd of Ball. Okay. And how long did that last? Shoot. Probably about, we had Crowd of Ball probably about, I think, two, three years. And then we started. Did y'all have artists on that label with y'all? Yeah, we had artists with us. How many did y'all sign? We didn't sign none. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We didn't sign no artists. Because at that time, we wasn't, after going what we went through, we wasn't putting nobody on paperwork. Wow, we I like nobody that. Down. All right, Gucci, we man. Just, we were just eating together, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I don't like dealing with that. Why? Because like, when I think about a label, I'm thinking about, like, if I was creating a label, I'm thinking about, okay, I need to get my paperwork because I'm going to sign some people. But how yeah, was he see, was the my label, now, Diamond Music Group, yeah, it's like that. Mm-hmm. But at, uh, uh, nineteen, you know what I'm saying? Twenty? Nah, I wasn't thinking like that. I ain't want to. I ain't. That's I, right. I had our kind. Of, we had our stuff. Did. We weren't worried about trying to handle the other artists because we trying to shake back. Got keep in mind, we we left for nothing, so we come with nothing. And that's mm-hmm. and that's all. crazy because I'm gonna be honest with you. Like even your masters and all that stuff right now still yeah. messed up in that music, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's still messed up. With still that, messed you know? up, and and, and that's well, we sad. Know, and we didn't know nothing. We didn't know nothing. No. We were handicapped. Well, I, I, all we knew, I knew, I knew this though. I knew how to be a perfect artist. I knew how to make music. I knew how to put on good shows and stuff like that. But as far as copyrights, publishings, yeah, um, ass caps, all these type of things, right there, um, booking studio time. We never been in a studio before, so yeah. except I the know one why, studio. Because back then, I hear a lot of artists, not just you, went through the same thing. And I'm like, okay, weren't there any older artists who had the knowledge that you knew that could have, you know? I was 15. Mm-mm. I know, but could have no pulled artists. you up. There was no artist uh, above It was you. one of the first nah, ones. No artists. Mm. No artists. Everybody was trying to see what we was doing to get to where we was at. Correct. Like, on the outside looking in, it looked like we had it all together. So nobody would even come talk to you about paperwork when you on the radio. You doing this. They, they ain't on there. So they thinking that stuff I was took care of. Right. You know what I mean? So, nah, nobody, nobody, nobody. But everything happens for a reason because when we go through things in life, 
to me, I'm looking at your life as a testimony where you should be trying to help other young kids coming yeah. up that they don't go through that. Even if they're not signed with your label, but you know, you see somebody talented yeah. and you see them on the radio or whatever and you you know, you put them to the side, do you have this straight? Do you have that straight? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it could be you looking at them and thinking that oh they, they got it together just the same thing that people looked at you. Nah, I I do I do it different. I okay. do it different. I do it different because I, I know that's why God sent me through that because he knew how wow. not to treat artists. He knew I was going to own a label one wow. day and he let me go from the ground up. He that's me, it. Almost like when you work at a shop, you when mm -hmm. you start from the janitor to washing the dishes to cooking to managing to owning the company, it's like you know every level in the company on what really needs to go on so you have more control and more handle on that situation and that's how i feel like he did me with as far as when i get a label because he let me see exactly how it feels to be an artist the resentment you feel and uh you know, I don't want to make nobody feel like that when you because right. you know, wow. it's dangerous when it get like and that. Yeah, be able yeah. to talk to an artist who do feel like how you felt and able to calm them down and be able to relate to them and get through to them yeah i didn't talk to a lot of them but some of them it some of them like i tell them you got to charge you got to walk away from it you got some stuff you just got to walk away Wow. Mm -hmm. And you learn. So I walk away. That old stuff, y'all ain't gonna never hear me talking about the old stuff. Yeah. That's the past. I gave that it did it did exactly what I needed to do. Learned from it me. gave me a platform and it gave me an audience to be able to do me. Mm -hmm. That that rip the, the, the crook for life and the diabolical, that wasn't that that wasn't that's not to carry my future. That's not to keep wow. me pushing. That's right. That's dead. That's real. You know what I'm saying? I agree. Because at the end of the day, it like I, I told Mr. Pookie the same thing, like I told you outside, you got an opportunity now. Yeah, now. And, and, and to move forward into that opportunity, it depends on you staying focused. The Bible even says no man look back without running, running into something. something. Yeah, straight up. You got to move forward. Exactly. And if you keep your eye focused on the prize, that's what you're going to get. But when you start looking back, you're going you gonna to cause yourself retraction. You ain't going to be able to move forward at a steady pace like you should be. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna look. I'm gonna show you this with that. This is how I look at that old music. You ever know when you got like you had those old high school friends that y'all just used to yeah, 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 yeah. get low yeah. and go hard yeah, all the yeah, time. Yeah. Y'all you know, get together, good times, and you look back and you see them, and you's like, oh man, we used to have good times. Yeah, yeah. But we can't do that now. Yeah, right. I yeah. got my kids at home. Yeah, I got to get up for work in the morning. I got to do this. It was fun back then, but now we, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's grind time. Good memories. Good memories. But right now. That's my past. I'm wow. looking at my future, and that's how I feel about the old music. I like that, man. All right. Um, so, you, don't, you did you have more questions? I'm gonna shut it down. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it flew out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got something though, man. Uh, that I want to say though, how these artists be acting like people in general act like okay. they can't do stuff, they can't make things happen. Okay. I look at it. I touch down, bro, with nothing. Yeah. I had nothing, bro. I'm on preparation. I work. I get up at 6 in the morning. I work to 4 in the afternoon. I pick Beast up my mode. kids, drop them off by 6 in the afternoon, Beast and mode. I go straight to the studio until 2.30 Beast in mode. the morning and Beast lay mode. it down. And, and, and that's 2.30 in the morning leaving. That's not that's, So that's not adding on the ride that it takes me to get back to my crib. I agree. And then I lay down and get back up, and I'm right back on it. Just like before I got here, what I tell you, I'm, I'm coming from work, dropping yeah, out my yeah, kids, yeah. and I'm you on my way. That. You know? That's right. So it's like... Ain't no excuse. Ain't no excuse. I love it. Ain't no excuse for nobody. I love it. And 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 the masses need to hear that because that'll mm -hmm, help somebody. Mm -hmm. Because you you was gone not even just a year ago. Yeah. And now you didn't touch down and you and you and you ain't playing no games because nah, you had time to think about what you wanted to do. And you're doing it. And that's a blessing. And people don't see see you see you gotta focus to do that. And it takes letting people go, letting things go around you in order to go this new way that you're trying to grow to. You so have to. I get that. You because I I've been there. And a lot of people said he was you think you this or you think you that. I remember, man. They laughed at me cuz I quit drinking, smoking, everything. I shut it down. Yeah. Because I didn't feel like it was no time to be celebrating when I came home right before Christmas and my kids I couldn't even afford to buy them anything. Say that. So after that, I never drank again. It's been over th over 20 some years, almost 30 to what 25 years. Yeah. Never drank, never smoked, never did anything again because I didn't feel like it was a time to celebrate. Yeah. Because 
I had to focus. I, I didn't even celebrate holidays for the first three years. It was straight focus. Straight Because I knew that my son was young at the time and my daughter, and I said I had to focus because I kind of felt like I let them down. Yeah. And I didn't get no, wasn't no visitation, none of that stuff yeah. for, for the whole time. Basically just me and God. Right, because they didn't visit. They, they no. Mm -hmm. But, but your, I like, your but, kids but, visited. Yeah, my, oh, well, yeah. when I was in Seagullville, yeah. Oh, but oh, some oh, people oh, didn't. Yeah, some you know people, some people didn't. I, I can guarantee you, everybody didn't. What, because, visit me? Yeah, visit you. No, just my kid. I didn't. I, but you know, you got to put people. Yeah, you approve. You approve it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I didn't expect people. My my pre trial year. Like once I got on a pre trial that first year, I everybody erased themselves out the picture. There it is. I didn't even have to. There it is. I, they they stopped picking up their phone. Yeah. They owe me money. They think I'm hot. Girls see I ain't going to the club no more throwing bread and doing this. So they don't ain't no use of being they around me no they more. So back. this, this, this. So everybody fell back. So my whole year, that was my whole year out. But it was my like my first year in. Yeah. Because I yeah. lost everybody. Yeah. So when I went in, I was good. I didn't expect nothing from nobody because I already seen where it was at. So the only people I talked to was my wife or well, my ex wife, my kids, my brother, my mother, Doski. That's it. Nobody else man, wrote. Nobody man. talked to me. I noticed that whenever I was doing some research. I noticed I saw um, on Facebook, I saw where they had posted your TDC, your number, uh -huh. and information of the address and so forth if anybody wanted to write you. Yeah. But that was only done like a year before you were almost ready to come back out. Uh -huh. But you were gone how many years? Three, four Three and years? a half. Three we're really half. Right, right at four. Okay. How come that wasn't done like before? Because, you know, letters help. Well, it helps you to keep going. It was it was done at the very beginning because I it put was. it up. I was working my Facebook at the beginning, so okay. it was the Instagram. I wasn't, but it was up at the very beginning. But the thing about it was, I was telling like they were wanting to do that. I'm like, bro, I'm not tripping on that. I'm in here. Let me be in here. But the thing about it is, that's the only people that did write me were fans. Mm -hmm. You know, no Cause, friends. Cause wow. That helped you. All fans. That that's helped you though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It made me feel good. Because yeah. they, they came at the right times. Exactly. You know what I'm exactly. They came at the right times. So, yeah, they made me feel good. Well, That's Mr. what I would think. Mr. Luigi, we appreciate you, man. Um, like I said, um, you definitely, uh, anytime you're in the area, you're welcome to come here if you want to push something out to the masses, the new projects and yeah. stuff like that. I'm on. So, man, thank you for the show. And uh, thank you for... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank Very you for good. coming, man. And hey, it's going down, man. Appreciate y'all. Yes, sir. Boss Talk 101. Yes, sir. Oh,